Anyway, good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday, March 22nd. I want to uh, welcome you to this special meeting of Rules and Election Committee. We're going to deal with one item, and then we'll move into a, another uh, meeting where we'll deal with uh, another issue. This deals with the neighborhood councils. Mr. Clerk, you want to read the uh, uh, item? Yes, sir. Item number one is the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment Report relative to an online voting pilot for neighborhood council elections. This item was continued from the last rules meeting of March 8th. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, Mr. Weezer, I'm joined by Mr. Weezer, so we do have a quorum. We heard this item before a few weeks ago, I believe on March 8th. Uh, we had some questions for uh, the department, if I remember. Uh, correctly, the department representatives are here today. We also took uh, comment from the public, and I closed the public hearing. But we do have a few folks, so what I thought I'd do is for a few minutes, uh, I'd reopen it, this time a minute each. And uh, uh, I would think, let's start with the, uh, the public comment cards. Sure. We're now joined by Mr. Harris Dawson, so this uh, committee is full, so I'd like Tom, I think it's uh, Groot or Grudy, Elizabeth Peterson Gower, Blair Beston, please come forward. Robert Newman, please come forward. We're only going to have a limited public comment. So if I call your name, please, you know, don't wait for the person I called before you just come up to the mic and identify yourself. Patty Berman, please. Good, uh, good evening. Good evening, council members. Elizabeth Peterson Gower. I'm a resident of 400 South Main Street, unit 808. I own a business at 809 and I own businesses at 541 South Spring Street. Um, I feel it's very important that we have online voting, um, especially in this election where very, very few of us had any knowledge of uh, this uh, new uh, neighborhood council formation. Um, we feel that uh, there's been some issues with vetting this neighborhood council properly. Uh, we want to make sure that all of us come together as a community, one community of downtown Los Angeles, and have the ability to form relationships and to vote together. So it's very, very important that we have the polling place that's been chosen and online voting, and I would encourage actually another polling place so that all of us can come together and unite as a community and work together on all issues. And it's very, very important that we all have the right to vote and we can be easily accessible to voting and information about the new formation of this neighborhood council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've actually been asked to read for Blair Beston, who no, well, I tell you what we can do. If you have a document, why don't you give that to the sergeant, and we will take it from there. Again, let me remind all that we've already had a hearing on this issue, so we're going to listen to some of the speakers. I will not be able to listen to you all, so I'm telling you in advance. So if I've called your name, please come forward. Identify yourself. Yes. Is she hot? I don't, oh, there we go. Now you can hear me. Gentlemen, uh, my name's Patty Berman. I'm the president of the Downtown Neighborhood Council, and we do have a CIS on this item, so I would like to ask for my five minutes. We'll see what we we're going to do. Like I said, I already minutes. closed. Uh, hold Patty's time. I already closed the uh, public comment. We had it last week, so as a courtesy, I'm allowing individuals to speak. The rule states that you can speak up to five minutes. So, but I will not take those. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, at this point, I want to get as many people in as I can. So why don't we just take it from the top. You'll get your minute, and then we'll take it from there. So go ahead. All right. Uh, our neighborhood council was one of the ones who did have the online voting before. To say that there were no hiccups in this in the situation would be untrue. But it is the way we're going. It's the way of the future and we need to be able to use the online voting, especially in this election coming up where we have so little time. It will make a big difference in a lot of people who might otherwise be disenfranchised. So there's a lot, I know there's a lot of stuff 
going on with these things that you're worried about for the future. Let's take it one step at a time. Let's get online voting for this election, and then let's take a look at a way for the neighborhood councils and then the entire city to move into the future on voting and do it in a way that is adequate and good for everyone. Thank you so much, and it's good to see you again. So again, uh, do we have Robert Newman, Tom? Please identify yourself. Charlie Wu, I saw Charlie earlier. Charlie, make your way up. Uh, Jacob, Jacob, I can't, is it Van Horn? Please, come on, sir. Hello, and uh, good evening, uh, committee. My name is uh, Robert Newman. I'm VP of Administration for the Downtown Los Angeles Neighbor Council, also a stakeholder. I work downtown. I have two parts to share with you regarding the online voting subject matter. Firstly, in 2016 neighbor council elections, a total of 25,571 votes were cast, or voters rather, cast ballots. 34 neighbor councils conducted online voting. 34% of the stakeholders voted online. I got elected to my third term on D-Link in this election with 82% early voting and 16% were cast at the polling place. No stakeholders cast a paper ballot for me. Therefore, I support online voting and believe it is a very integral part of the civic engagement process and stakeholder participation. But like any voting process, it must be fair, convenient, and inclusive of all stakeholders, which lends me to my second point. Legislation is amended and enacted with the best of intentions. We do not see some of the pitfalls till the process commences. The subdivision ordinance is no exception. The subdivision ordinance as written has caused downtown stakeholders to, to be divided, not united. Thank you. May I finish? Thank Excuse. you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to just do a minute. If I give you more, I have to give other people more. And I have another hearing after this. So if I could have the next speaker, and I'm also looking for Ellen Endo. Uh, Ellen, uh, is it Kamamoto? No. Yes. Hey, Charlie. It's Charlie Wu. I'm a property owner in downtown Los Angeles. Many of my properties in the toy district. I also own properties in the fashion district, arts districts, and little Tokyo. And among all my involvements in the downtown area include for, former president of the Historic and Cultural Neighborhood Council in downtown Los Angeles. So I, I'm really interested in how the city works, and I want to include as many people as possible, many stakeholders as possible in this process. I didn't know about this election until two days ago. I think a lot of people in my boat, I think we need more time to go to do more outreach. And at, most importantly, I think we need to make it easier for people to participate, to encourage more people to participate. I think the key to the success of the future of a neighborhood council is to include everybody. It's not to make it difficult for people to participate. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So if I could add the next speaker, and then after, uh I think it's Noel. I'll be looking for Patricia McAllister. Yes, identify yourself. Good evening, council members. My name is Jacob Van Horn. I am a member of the downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council, representing the historic core. Uh, I ran in one of the elections that had online voting for the first time. It was a great success. We had people excited. They could engage in direct democracy. Uh, because they were a stakeholder. Their citizenship didn't matter. Their criminal st status didn't matter. We as Los Angeles, we should be setting the example for the enfranchisement of voters, considering what we have going on in some other jurisdictions. In an election where we have over a million potential eligible stakeholders that can vote, if we're going to have only one polling place, we owe it to ourselves to make it as easy as possible for everyone to vote so we can have people continue to get excited about participating in this process. However, we need to make sure that we we take the time that it's done correctly because we did have problems with verification. We need to measure out, out these, these issues and make sure they are addressed before we go into this process. Thank you very much. Okay, so I think maybe it's Noel, that is Scott Gray, Rocky Dagadio, General Jeff. Hi, identify yourself. Hi, I'm uh, Ellen Endo. I'm uh, president of the Little Tokyo Business Association, and we manage the Little Tokyo bid. We represent the uh, 430 businesses in the Little Tokyo area. Uh, we are supportive of the Skid Row Neighborhood Council, but we encourage you to approve uh, online voting because we think that's the most accessible and the most fair and the most inclusive. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, Alan Kumamoto, Historic Cultural Neighborhood Council. Uh, you heard from Little Tokyo, uh, which inclu we include Little Tokyo, but we also include the Arts District, uh, El Pueblo, uh, Chinatown, uh, Victor Heights, as well as Solano Canyon. So with our stakeholders, uh, we want to make sure that we have online voting so that they can participate because it's pretty hard for them not to uh, in, unless we have some kind of online voting or pop-up votes, voting places and things like that. Uh, we would hope that you would consider extending the time as well uh, so that we would have more time for outreach and getting, making sure that we know exactly uh, what the online voting requirements will be. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So if I could have the next person come and identify themselves, and I'll be looking for Joanne Danigan and Matt Nichols. Yes. Hi, my name is Noel Marine, and I put the wrong agenda item. Could I get moved to the next item in the next meeting? Uh, you, your name again was? Noel Marine. Oh, okay. So you want to, you want to do the six o'clock. Okay. Yes, we'll sorry. do. I will do that for you right now. Thank you. Okay. So. Yes, sir. Identify yourself. Yes, my name is Scott Gray. I represent Capital Foresight. We own multiple buildings throughout the city in the Little Tokyo area, in the Historic Core, in the Arts District, in the Fashion District, as well as in the uh, Industrial Warehouse District. Up until a couple of weeks ago, we had absolutely no idea that there was any consideration of uh, the formation of the Skid Row Neighborhood Council. Uh, I am uh, representing thousands of tenants and business owners, thousands of employees, and I would urge you to, at a very minimum, add um, online voting. There should be uh, some form of absentee ballots allowed. This is critical to the process in order to get the full participation of all the stakeholders. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please come and identify yourself. Good evening. I'm Joanne Dengannon, and I'm here on behalf of Central City Association. CCA supports voter engagement, and we are concerned that DTLA stakeholders will not participate in the Skid Row Neighborhood Council vote due to lack of notification, limited opportunity to vote, and a sol solitary polling location. All downtown stakeholders should weigh in on this proposal, as it will remove the Skid Row Neighborhood from D-Link and part of HCNC. We support all efforts to make elections open for all and therefore support online voting. CCA thanks committee, this committee for your consideration. Okay, thank you. So now again, I'll be looking for Doug uh, Fitzsimmons and, and Mr. Doug Adio is here. I called your name, Rock. You can come forward or whoever's first in line, just identify yourself. Sure. And uh, Ayana Gomez. Yes, sir. Uh, Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, Rocky Delgadillo, uh, representing United Downtown Los Angeles, I believes that a United Downtown makes each neighborhood stronger. We know that the Skid Row Neighborhood Council uh, petition is materially flawed, has serious defects. If it was to go forward, it would be subject to legitimacy claims. We believe that we should fix those problems first, hit the pause button, and put this election in the right place. Make sure that there are enough polling locations, enough ability to vote online or by mail, and make sure that everybody has the notice available to make sure that they, this election is a fair election for all of downtown, and, you, and town, downtown will hopefully have a chance to capture these opportunities that are coming its way with HHH and H in a way that is meaningful and palatable for a community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky. It's good to see you. So next speaker, please. Doug, it's you. Then I see I have General Jeff, and I'll look for Matt uh, Nichols and Miguel uh, Nelson, and I think I called uh, Ayana Gomez. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to thank the committee for, for hearing me. My name is Doug Fitzsimmons. I'm president of the South Robertson Neighborhood Council. My neighborhood council uh, has submitted a CIS on this uh, and has gone on record as being a strong supporter of online voting. That continues. Um, just to uh, plot three items quickly from uh, our CIS. Um, 
One, our neighborhood council believes that it is reasonable to extend uh, terms one year to put us on the NC system on an uh, odd number year system to avoid conflicts with uh, other elections. Uh, it also, uh, again, while supporting the uh, online system, uh, did have major issues with pop-up polling. It is an issue that needs to be explored in great detail uh, before we continue using uh, that as a, as a system. And uh, thirdly, um, the setting a 20% um, minimum for spend for elections, for outreach, uh, we feel is excessive uh, and should be held through other means. Thanks. Okay, so General, uh, and then I'm looking for Matt Nichols and uh, Miguel Nelson, uh, Ayana Gomez or Ayana. Yes. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is General Jeff. I am the chair of the Skid Row Neighborhood Council Formation Committee. And, and, and as I've said before this committee previously, this is a very historic moment in the history of Skid Row community. And so uh, we turned in an application. Uh, the city approved it on January 11th. And the ordinance language says that, you know, there must be an election within 90 days. Um, the election is going to happen as, as was uh, assigned to us April 6th. Uh, we're ready to get that. So now this issue of online voting exists, and this is through committee. By the time it gets before the full council, that, at the earliest it would be Friday. That would be less than two weeks out. It would be absolutely uh, disrespectful to the Democratic Party to even try to push online voting through that fast when we've already begun our outreach efforts and people are ready to show up at the polls without online voting. Thank you. Thank you. So if I could have the next speaker, please come and identify yourself. Hi. Hi. Ariana Gomez. I'm with the L.A. Fashion District Business Improvement District. Speak into the mic. I feel very strongly that there should be online voting for this election. I don't think four hours is enough time, especially for those of us who are at work, to get to this one single polling location. I also participated in the last election that had online voting, and it was honestly a bit of a complicated process, so we, I would like to you know, have that process improved as well. There was a lot of issues with IDs and what was accepted and what wasn't. And I really think in order to have a fair election, you need to be inclusive and make it possible for everyone to participate. Thank you for coming. So again, uh, I'm looking at Matt Nichols. If I call you, please, because I'm not going to be able to get everybody. So if I call you, get in line. Miguel Na Nelson and Ron Ziff. Yes, sir. Uh, Matt Nichols. I'm also with United Downtown LA. And I'll just defer to what Rocky already stated. Thank you. Okay. Next. And then I'm looking for Jasmine Ramos. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Miguel Nelson, and uh, we're building a uh, private community center and uh, working closely with all of our uh, neighbors, and, and uh, including you know businesses and property owners and residents, uh, for about a six-block region. And uh, as far as I can tell, none of us, thousands of us, were completely unaware that this had happened, that there was going to be an election. It's only my involvement with... Uh, with the Building Improvement District that brought it to my attention four weeks ago. I've been active in every meeting since then. And uh, we clearly need to be able to vote online and have absentee voting and have multiple voting locations. Otherwise, we're going to exclude thousands of stakeholders, um, folks that have been around for 40 years, 60 years, 100 years. These businesses have been there forever. Um, and uh, I frankly just don't think it's fair if this election actually happens without those uh, alternative voting stations. Thanks. Thank you. Come on down. Uh, Ron Ziff. Hey, Ron, hold, let's hold Ron's time. Ron, I got the uh, community impact statement. I appreciate the work of the Neighborhood Council on this. Uh, the hearing on this matter, we already held it. So what I did today was to, I appreciate everybody that came down. I opened it back up with one minute a person. So I need you to condense uh, your, your statement. So anyway, good to see you again, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Ron Ziff, President, Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Council. 
the neighborhood councils were created so each community could address its problems individually. A cookie cutter approach doesn't do that. Um, Sherman Oaks is a large geographic area. We've divided, subdivided our area into seven areas. We can't have seven separate areas vote on three ballots. Uh, we'd like, like that issue changed. Uh, with online voting, we'd request that that be optional at the uh, option of each neighborhood council. It doesn't suit each neighborhood council. These people that want it, let them have it. In Sherman Oaks, we don't want it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Hi, come up and identify yourself. My name is Jasmine Ramos. I am a member of the Downtown Neighborhood Council representing the Los, An um, Los Angeles Fashion District Business Improvement District. I was an active uh, voter in the last election and I strongly believe that two weeks is not enough lead time in order to allow people to register properly. There was many, many issues the last time around and I think two weeks in order to have democracy is not too much to ask. I think that with only having one polling place, open for four hours, we are doing ourselves a disservice by not allowing everyone to have a vote and have a say in what's happening in our communities. And I think that this would open the door to legitimacy issues in the future. And I think that if we're looking at a larger scale national issue and Los Angeles being on the forefront of making and setting an example, we want to ensure online voting and have longer than two weeks to register all downtown stakeholders. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. So I'm looking for Suzanne Holly, Daniel Tabor, and I cannot pronounce, is it, is it Hayek from the Skid Row Design Collective? And Henriette, it looks like Browser of Bowers. Please come forward. Yes. Hi, I am Suzanne Holly from the Downtown Center Business Improvement District. Uh, as this is a precedent-setting event, I think it's critically important that all interested stakeholders, and these stakeholders include everyone from all parts of downtown LA, have adequate access to this process. Access includes access to information and access to voting. There has not been adequate outreach done um, on this. Additional time, just a little additional time would help that greatly. Uh, with regards to access to voting, four hours in one location for the stakeholders being served is just simply not enough, and having an online vote would greatly assist in this process. Uh, the DC bid uh, feels strongly that the public would not benefit by moving forward with this process at the time, and that the public interest would best be served by allowing additional time to address the access issues noted. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to let you know, I'm going to take about four or five more cards and then we'll cut off public. Yes, sir, identify yourself. Good afternoon, council members. I am Daniel Taban of Jade Enterprises. I am greatly concerned of the idea to divide downtown Los Angeles. We have seen amazing progress in creating a distinct community in the heart of our city. And to divide it will only negatively impact its many residents. The proposed formation of the Skid Row <coughs> Neighborhood Council has lacked transparency. And it is extremely important to allow online voting to ensure all stakeholders have a fair opportunity to vote. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Thank you. Yes, sir. Welcome. Hi. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Haik Haik Mahurian, and I'm uh, <clears throat> a community liaison with the Skidrow Neighborhood Council Formation Committee. Uh, and uh, I uh, feel that I, what needs to be said also uh, is that um, it, one particular point is that uh, having online voting, something that we haven't heard at this desk yet, um, without proper uh, ample advance time, grossly disadvantages an already very disadvantaged uh, population of folks who are the residents of the Skid Row neighborhood. Uh, hence, one of the reasons, right, to form this council is to represent a group of folks who are uh, very underrepresented in the community. So I feel um, it's actually a disadvantage, uh, disadvantage and uh, disenfranchisement of the residents of the Skid Row neighborhood uh, to 
have online voting without volunteer. For Thank you. Time. Thank you. Thank you. So if I could have the next speaker, and I'll be looking for Barbara uh, Dimas and John Mao uh, P. Maybe it is and. Kevin Michael Key, yes. Hello, my name is uh, Harriet Brouwers, and I work with the Los Angeles Poverty Department in Skid Row. And I uh, want to ask you to, uh, to uh, not to do online voting for this particular uh, vote, because it does not, uh, I hear a lot of concern about stakeholders. I don't hear any concern about the residents and that's the people that are not represented, and they won't be represented if online voting is going to be the case. Because the people that live in Skid Row have very limited access uh, to uh, online equipment. And it's important that people actually get to know Skid Row as a community that there is, that wants to take care of its own issues. And people who, onla who vote online don't even know about Skid Row. They don't go to Skid Row. I hear a lot about progress, but the progress has not been made in Skid Row, only around Skid Row. And that's exactly the reason why Skid Row wants to have a chance to represent Thank itself. Thank, Thank you. you. Please come forward next and identify yourself. Hi, my name is Barbara Demas. I am a resident of Skid Row. And like she said, those that are living in Skid Row want to be represented. That's why they went through the time and trouble to try to start our own council. And we don't have computers. We don't have access to online. So give us our own time and our own voice and allow us to vote in a way that will make it possible for the actual people that live on Skid Row to have some pride in their own community. Would that be too much? Thank you. Next, identify. Hi, my name is John Malpied. I'm, a, I'm an artist working in downtown. A lot of people talk about the artists, but I've been working uh, in the Skid Row community for 30 years with Los Angeles Poverty Department. Um, yes, if there's, going to be, if there's going to be online voting, then there should be provisions to make it accessible to the people living in Skid Row. I don't think that can be done by the city in two weeks. Um, the reason, the reason uh, that there is a, uh, this movement for Skid Row Neighborhood Council is because the, uh, Skid Row has been uh, uh, run by remote control from the other parts of downtown for far too long. And the issues that are important to Skid Row, uh, which is the health and well-being of people living in precarious situations, has been ignored by people uh, who are running the neighborhood from, re from a remote location. So this got to stop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Kevin Michael Key. Good evening, um, Mr. President. Mr. Huizar, Mr. Harris Dawson. Uh, when I came downtown 20 years ago, I had a law license and a drug habit as hungry as a lobo wolf with lockjaw. July 12, 2002, I entered treatment in Skid Row, and I became a Skid Row advocate ever since then. I've appeared before this panel often, and I've always treated you with respect. The people that run d -Link that are here right now, they want online voting so they can continue to disrespect us. They're scared to come to our community. And if we put on online voting, Skid Row, which is home to the largest homeless population, many of our most needy residents do not have ready access to online voting. So once again, the lessers are going to get less. In addition, there have been prior problems with online voting. It is subject to being abused. It is subject to being Thank vetted. Thank and so we ask you to help us level playing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Key. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now I do have uh, some some remaining cards that we will not be able to get to, but those cards will be added to the record. But we uh, also took a significant amount. Uh, Mr. Hermes, sit down. And don't disrupt this meeting. This is serious. We're not going to play around with you today. Okay, this is serious. And so uh, we had already heard public comment. We reopened public comment. Uh, Mr. Weezar, we still have another uh, hearing to get to, so I'm going to turn it over to you. I know you have some questions. And again, I want to thank everyone for coming. So the public comment period is closed. Thank you. Is Dan here? Can you please uh, come up to the table for some questions? So what brought us here today is uh, after
in the, some neighborhood council elections, a uh, motion was put in through council uh, that asked that we suspend online voting uh, until Dunn completed a report. Dunn has since done that, and you have identified certain recommendations about how, if the council so chooses to move forward with online voting, uh, should we move forward. Uh, and what also brings us here today is that we have created a mechanism in which uh, neighborhood councils could subdivide if a local community so which wishes and go through an election process to make that happen. Here in downtown, uh, we've used uh, online voting for the two neighborhood councils that cover it, correct? The Historical Cultural Neighborhood Council and d -Lank. And both of these, um, we had some issues, but what is your opinion as to whether we can move forward with online voting in downtown uh, with us assuring that it is uh, transparent, practical, and reasonable for everyone involved. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Gracie Liu, General Manager for the Department of Neighbor Empowerment. I'm joined here by um, with Deputy City Attorney uh, Darren Martinez, who um, advises our department. Um, uh, I think wholeheartedly that online voting is is going to be very beneficial to the subdivision um, vote for the Skid Row Neighborhood Council because we are able to um, basically flip a switch and turn on the existing um, uh, databases that were created for both Historic Cultural Neighborhood Council and for Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council. Um, I, I know that some folks expressed concern in regard, uh, regarding the, um, the process of voter registration. Um, for us, the folks that already voted, the 847 people for Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council in the 2016 elections, as well as 194 in Historic Cultural, they are already pre-registered and ready to vote. They will simply be emailed a, um, information on how to um, and uh, I'll register online um, to get their user ID and password. They will not have to give us their documentation again to show that they are stakeholders. Uh, what we can also do is in the next week, because we have two weeks before the election, um, the at the poll election for downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council, excuse me, uh, the forming Skid Row Neighborhood Council, um, we can do um, in-person registration and voting, which is what we call our pop-up polls. Um, the forming group also has a community meeting that's already scheduled for March 29th, and we can be available there to um, do a pop-up poll where we register people and can vote them uh, remotely. Uh, so that's what we offered in the last election, which was uh, very successful for uh, D-Link. Do you have any hiccups in the last online voting for D-Link? As I mentioned, it's likely uh, the hiccups that we did have were in regards to getting the documentation, all of the documentation that's needed to actually allow folks to vote. So neighbor councils can either self-affirm or they can use documentation to uh, register to vote. D-Link has documentation. And when you have documentation, when they were submitting information online for voter registration, sometimes they they didn't give us everything that, that is needed. In fact, one of our recommendations for um, the online voting, and, and, and just in general, not even, even if we didn't have online voting, we would recommend that all neighbor councils go to self-affirmation. The process of documentation is very burdensome um, to stakeholders. It is the, I, the literally the, the, the hardest um, registration, I think, of any voting uh, at any uh, federal state, county level, um, because you have to show deeds to your house, you have to bring your 1099s and your W-2s, and, and people who want to vote and participate are not used to providing that type of information. Okay, but to answer the question, uh, if we were to move forward with online voting for downtown LA, do you feel you could provide online voting without any problems? We don't anticipate any problems with online voting, as I mentioned um, the problems that we did have with with uh, 2016 elections were s mostly connected with the voter registration piece. Oh. 
Now, the other issue is, should we allow online voting? There's, the election is two weeks away. Are we prepared? You said you flip a switch for those who have registered before, but how do you get the word out that online vo voting is available, and how do you get the word out to all communities that this is actually uh, another option? So we would hopefully partner with D-Link as they have um, access to their stakeholders um, and, and work with them to do outreach um, to notify that this is available. Uh, our social media websites, it's, you know, if, if you're already tied into the neighbor council system, um, as D-Link has a lot of stakeholders already like, who know about them, it would be easier to... Uh, notify those people that this is going on. Um, so th you think two weeks is sufficient time? Well, it, it's not whether I think two weeks is sufficient, sufficient time. That's the, literally the only time that we do have because per the ordinance, we have to, we have to do um, an election within 90 days and of um, approval of the application, and that was on January 11th, so we have until April 11th. So we pushed it as far as possible so that both the forming committee and the neighborhood council that's affected could be informing their um, stakeholders that this was going to happen. And for instance, the Herman and Arroyo Seco area, Arroyo Seco has actually produced postcards. They're actually okay. spent money on this. And uh, on that issue, on outreach itself, uh, we I've been getting some emails and uh, the testimony today said that people didn't know about it. They don't think sufficient outreach was done. Uh, they weren't aware the subdivision was going on. Whose responsibility is it to do the outreach and what outreach was done for, the, for informing people in downtown that this election was going to occur? So in terms of mandated outreach, there is no, nothing within the ordinance that mandates outreach. As I mentioned before, we work with the neighborhood councils uh, to and the forming group and, and recommend that they do outreach to their neighborhoods. We're not funded to conduct massive amounts of outreach, even for the. So it's up to regular. the neighborhood councils to do the outreach. The forming committees and the neighborhood councils. And the neighborhood councils itself. Correct, okay. because they're supposed to notify. It, it's in their best interest to do so to notify that. Um, their stakeholders that this is going on because who uh, it's the majority of the voters that turn out um, that make the decision whether subdivision happens. So if only the forming committee is doing the outreach and the neighbor council does no outreach, it's very likely the forming committee is going to, you know, have a majority of the voters there. Okay. The neighbor council needs to do well, outreach too. Okay, but in other neighborhood council elections, I see Dunn doing some outreach saying, hey, reminder, election coming up, reminder, election coming up. We don't do that for subdivisions? Well, we, would, we will be doing that for subdivision to the existing database that we have, which would be the existing voters from 2016. So you do that? You, you remind we, people who we, have voted already? We will, yes, correct. We will be doing that and, and telling them about it and letting them know about it. But we did do three uh, community meetings, and at those community meetings, we had over 150 people come to these community meetings um, between... Herman and downtown, uh, excuse me, Skid Row Neighborhood Council. Okay, and when's the, when's the last time for the election to occur? It's currently scheduled for April 6th. That's correct. And when, 90 days from when the subdivision uh, application was filed, when would that be? Uh, April 11th. April 11th. So correct. some people have suggested here that we postpone the election, but we probably would only be able to postpone it uh, a few days. It's just a right. few days, that's correct. Just a few days. So it, it, it probably right. wouldn't make a difference anyway, right? And that's, uh, a, that's why we, when we notified um, the neighbor councils of the, the election that's coming up, we pushed it as far as we could to the very end so that they would have as much of the 90 days to conduct the outreach. Okay. All right. I'm finished with my question. Unless there are other questions, I'd like, no, I, I like to know what, what are you going to suggest to this uh, Committee. Sure. Well, look, I uh, have spoken to a number of stakeholders in downtown who were thrilled that we were using um, uh, online voting. And although it didn't work quite as well in other places, uh, generally speaking, most people, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, can you take note that those two individuals in front are waving their arms and they, they continue to come to every meeting, disrupt meetings? Okay, we so could say that's a warning for them, and 
And if they yeah, do that Mr. again, they will be Mr. asked to Mr. Spindler and Mr. Herman, chill out. It's your yeah. last warning. Thank, Thank you very much. So I was excited that we are doing online voting. Wait a minute. Yes, I'm talking to you, and you know it. You want to leave right now or you want to wait? So you sit down, be quiet like everybody else, be respectful like everybody else. This is a very important issue. It's a joke to you, but it is not to the other people that are here. And I'm not going to let you make a mockery of it or your sidekick. So chill out. Go on. Thank you. So when we were doing online voting downtown, I think it was relatively successful. And it was an example of how we could continue to get more participation. And that ultimately, that's our goal. This committee itself has done several things to allow for council elections to involve more people uh, in, 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 uh, in different ways. For example, we moved our elections to the general state election to have people not get as burdened by going back to the polls. And so our goal, one of our mission, uh, one of our goals is to how do we allow more people to vote. So I think here, for the sake of consistency, we should keep that. Um, I am concerned, however, that this is late notice, uh, that we're two weeks before the election. We're saying, hey, we're going to allow this. But if you go back to the people who have voted, and if D-Lank and the committee, forming committee, lets people know what the op different options are, I, I think that would be okay. Um, w but one my final question before I make a recommendation is, for the day of voting, where how many stalls are there? How many polling places are there? Is there just one, as we heard in the uh, testimony? That's correct. Um, in our typical elections, there's only one polling location, which is why um, neighborhood councils uh, online voting was piloted in the first place so that we could provide greater options for folks, folks who couldn't come to the um, Apple location. So um, it's the same has been applied in terms of equity, what we've done in the past. It's one location. It's located within the forming um, neighborhood council boundaries. And it's, it's um, four hours. And uh, we can set up many different booths to, so that people can vote. They can, they but can that's typical of every neighborhood council election. That's correct. One polling location, that's four correct. hours. That's what's done every time. Four okay. hours is a standard. Um, we can extend um, with the if the neighborhood council requests uh, to up to eight hours. Okay, thank you. So with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I think some people here have asked that we also postpone the uh, election, but have you, as you've heard, we can't do that. It would just uh, move it a couple of a few days, which uh, I don't think you'd get the type of additional outreach that we would like to see by moving the election just a few days. But I would ask that we, uh, my recommendation would be that the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and the city clerk be instructed and authorized to enable the online voting platform for the April 2017 Neighborhood Council subdivision election for the downtown area. This should not change the existing suspension of online voting in any other area until we can further discuss the issues in Dunn's report and the factors that led to the suspension. Two, I would further move that we continue the Associated Council file and recommendations listed in Dunn's reporting committee for further discussion and, value and evaluation. And three, to assist with that future discussion, I would like to instruct Dunn to report to this committee with a recap of online voting for the April 2017 subdivision elections, along with recommendations from that experience, if any. Okay. So then without objection, that will be the order. Okay, is there any other business uh, before this committee, Mr. Clerk? Uh, no, sir, that clears the desk. Okay, then this committee is closed. I mean, this committee is adjourned. Now I want to go into the regular committee that we have today. So if you could read the item that's before us. No, wait, wait. You, you. No, wait, wait.